Scene. Hive World Slough. Hive Burke's exterior. Ground level. Smoggy and overcast. Trio are standing wearing breathing masks. Cheery place, isn't it? Can we hurry up and get this done already? I want to go back to Prestia. Hive Ganger hands Clarkson a challenge card. Clarkson, reading. Welcome to Slough. Don't breathe the air and don't wander off. This challenge will be a time trial race. A race? Yes! But against who? Wait a minute. Would you... Clarkson, reading. The course will take you up the outside of the hive to avoid the seedier bits, followed by a section to the centre of the hive itself. You will be racing against a rhino driven by an expert, with points awarded based on how close you are to their time. As for who this driver is, some say he has an STC filled with vehicle plans in his basement, or that he was raised on Sam Han. All we know is, he's not the Stig. He's the Stig's hiver cousin. <laughs> Stig climbs out of a hatch in the hive and walks towards the rhino. Helmet has a mohawk and Stig wears a tattered jacket with a stub gun on his hip. Oh, Hammond, one more thing. Clarkson reading. For this challenge, flying vehicles must stay less than one metre above the ground. Damn it! Stig takes off in rhino, bombing around and climbing the hive exterior via the route. Crikey, look at him go. That's a drift in a tracked vehicle on a ledge hundreds of metres up. How does he do that? You wouldn't catch me doing that. We don't need you to tell us that, Captain Slow. Stig enters the hive, shooting through the marked crumbling maintenance passages, dark mag tram tunnels and large vehicle ways. I hope there's no trains in there. Hammond, you worry too much. I'm sure there isn't. Stig crosses the finish line into a large empty storage chamber, and Arbites is waving the checkered flag. Let's see the time to beat. 16 minutes and 13 seconds. Well, gentlemen, I'll go first. Clarkson drives up the first ramp. And off and up we go! Power! <laughs> Tank clatters up the precarious steep ramp after steep ramp at speed. All the agoraphobic grannies back home will be watching this and gasping every time I get near the edge. I had a new reinforced drive shaft installed after last time, so it should hold the immense power of this beast this time. Clarkson reaches exterior airlock and waits for it to open. Come on, come on, I don't have time for this! A couple of Hiver children have wandered onto the track and leap out of the way. Get out of the way, you idiots! <laughs> Clarkson misjudges a corner and slides through a wall. Sorry, my bad, my bad, don't mind me! <laughs> Clarkson crosses the finish line, whipping. Beat that, you two. Scene. Hive exterior. May is up next. We'll be taking this a bit slower this time, since I don't want to fly off the edge. Hammond watches through binoculars, talking to Clarkson via Vox. Hammond to Clarkson. Uh, he's forgotten to take that statue off. Scene. May's IFE. The only thing worse than falling to my death hundreds of metres down is letting Clarkson beat me in that scrap heat of his. Still... Ooh, her. <laughs> what? May zooms through the channel. A low pipe decapitates his statue. Did you hear a clanging noise there? May passes Clarkson's crash site. The gouges in the floor and very tank-shaped hole in the wall looks like the trail marks of the gorilla. <laughs> Scene. The finish line. Clarkson watches May pull in. <laughs> What's so funny? Turn around. Your statue appears to have lost its head. Bollocks. Clarkson voxes Hammond. Clarkson to Hammond. Hammond, you're completely going to believe this, but May's statue is now missing its head. Hammond goffs over Vox. Scene. Hive exterior. Right, my turn. Let's get this over with. If I do fall off, at least I can stop my own fall. Hammond starts slow and soon gets faster, swishing around the ramps and ledges. This is actually pretty fun. It feels snappy, responsive, agile. This isn't its real home, but it might as well be. Pity they would never waste things like this on trivially important tasks like patrolling hives. Hammond enters the halls. Focus. Keep it straight and low. Don't take the corners too fast. Don't go too fast. In the mag tram tunnels, a light appears around the corner. Huh? Oh, oh! <laughs> Hammond swerves out of the way of the trap, scrapes the wall and loses control into a series of corkscrews. <laughs> Hammond eventually regains control. He told me it was safe. Clarkson! <laughs> Sing. The finish line as Hammond arrives. That was quick. 
Hammond to Clarkson. I nearly got flattened by a train. Oh, uh, has anyone got the times? <laughs> right here. Remember the steak did it in 16 minutes and 13 seconds. Jeremy Clarkson, you did it in 21 minutes and 11 seconds. Jeremy grunts. I did it in 20 minutes and 48 seconds. Clarkson scoffs. <laughs> that clapped out old rust bucket missing half of its treads. You're joking. It would seem your abomination is, surprise, surprise, not that speedy. Now, Richard Hammond, you did it in 15 minutes and 19 seconds. What? I was faster than the steak? It's not really comparable. You're in an anti-gravity powered flying machine. For goodness sake. You should have been faster by years if you want to brag about it. Hammond makes the loser sign at Clarkson. Whatever. Clarkson to May. He's going to be absolutely unbearable forever. Cut back to ship. Scene. Lithonia Shuttle Bay. Ship board late afternoon. A couple of shuttles are parked at the side. A track has been marked out in the middle. Hammond is zipping around, practicing on a speeder. Clarkson and May watch. I must admit, I do sometimes feel a little jealous. What's this? Captain Slowwood marrying the fast thing? I must admit that it does look a bit fun. You know they used to be cheap enough for the guard to use. You're kidding me. A magos, a tall and slender person in a hood, and two ornately dressed voidsmen walk in behind. We even used to have jet bikes, for Christ's sake. Now jet bikes are extinct apart from the Eldar ones, and only a few lucky marines get to use speeders. The Dark Age called, James. They want you back. <laughs> bah, bet they would. We just have to appreciate the few scraps of good things we have. The hooded figure speaks in a curiously lilting voice. The figure. You are correct. I shall grant you that. Every year your technology degrades a little more. Oh no, now there's two of them. Please take him with you. I can see where he's going. Give it a few more millennia and it'll be a race of Clarksons. Who are you anyway? Figure obviously avoids the question. I was asked to give you this. Why they could not have used one of the crew I do not know. Figure hands May a note and walks off with the others to a very fancy shuttle. What a strange man. W was it a man? There's some bigwig rogue traitor on board. Wanted a word with the captain. That's probably his retinue, and you know the eccentric company they keep. Fair enough. May opens note. May reading. Since you all love Sly so much, your next destination is another wonderful, desolate place called Arnight. You will receive further details on Planetfall. Bollocks. Oi, that's my line. Hammond flies just above their heads, swishing their hair. Bloody Nora Hammond. Reese must have got to his little head. No wonder he crashes so much. Scene. Town of Barcham. Our night. Sunny, scorching hot. Trio stand in Sandy Town Square. Five minutes and I'm burning already. I'm amazed that vehicle of yours didn't come with a nice Protonian umbrella you could use as a parasol. Look sharp. Challenge is here. Man in desert robes hands Clarkson a challenge card. Clarkson. Reading. Welcome to the hellish desert of sand and rock, known as Arnite and Segmentum Solar. The last stop in your journey before Terra. Fortunately for you, we weren't allowed to send you to Talarum. The nearest spaceport is in the town of Kalish, 1,550 kilometers away, which you must reach in order to leave. You may use the remainder of your purchase budget to locally modify your vehicles for the journey. That's a problem for you, isn't it? You're already 3,000 negative on your budget. We shall see. <laughs> Cut to vehicle modification montage. Clarkson is hammering something. May picks a spanner from his set in size order. Hammond stands on a stepladder to reach his vehicle. Clarkson is still hammering. Sing. Barcham Town Square. Hammond arrives, attracting stairs. With my remaining 1,000, I have added the most needed features. First up is a proper canopy, since I'm sick of being soaked. I know this is the desert, but you never know. Second, I converted the passenger seat to a fold-out bed. I try to have the machine spirit purified, but Jeremy's hammer shut it up more efficiently. Clarkson arrives. What has the orangutan done this time? Jeremy, you have managed to do the impossible and make it look worse. Says you. You added go faster stripes to yours for Christ's sakes. <laughs> I think they look cool. <laughs> of course, Hammond would think they look cool. Anyway, I had to keep it simple since I'm already over budget. I've welded on some big side tanks because I doubt there are any petrol stations out there. 
I've also installed a sleeping bag, a seat cushion and, the most important thing, an air conditioner for this solar oven. How much did that cost you? £500. But let's not get bogged down with that. I don't need to say anything. May arrives. The statue is now mounted on the front with a grok skull head. <laughs> <laughs> um, it doesn't look like he's changed much. While you two have been busy with useless things, I, on the other hand, have been focusing on things I think you've forgotten. First off, I've installed a toilet seat on the back for your convenience. I even fixed the track treads. Is this like what you used when you were driving across Inwit? The very same. Anyway, the real wonder is inside. If you follow me. May's car in this literally sounds the same as the one whenever he was driving across um, Syria. And, uh, was it the BMW? I think he was driving. They were trying driving. to get to Bethlehem and they were driving across the desert and he put the... Oh, the, Africa, uh, the African corpse. Yeah. Yeah, he, he yeah. The toilet seat in the back. Oh, yeah, he did actually. Oh, no, wait. No, that was Clarkson oh, in was India. Oh. That was Clarkson in India. He put the toilet seat on the oh. back. Oh, was that? Because I'm pretty sure Clarkson knows of it and memes about India. <laughs> yeah. And we'll have no more said about it. No Let's more keep said going. about this. <laughs> May opens the rear hatch. A shower is attached to the door. And inside, May has converted the crew compartment to a living space with a stove, a fridge, cupboards, a mini bar, a bed, a table and some chairs. Oh my word. Well, you're set, aren't you? Still looks rustier than your knowledge of Kriegish in here. Indeed I am. Your access to all of this depends entirely on you being nice to me. I know you're immediately going to try and break it because you're jealous and if you do, you'll find yourself crapping in a hole and eating cold beans out of a can. Am I clear? Anyway, now that's over. Shall we have a look at the map the producers gave us? Clarkson reading. They really did mark on the edges as here be sandworms. So I think we should take this route here around Ward's Butte because the dunes look smaller. No, no, no. The other side is quite substantially shorter. Fade to black and back. Trio are still arguing. Gentlemen, enough. Shall we just start going? Have a look and send Hammond off to scout when we need to. Fine. Oh, and Hammond, don't just fly off. I don't want to be stuck with his smug face in his chimney stack machine for days in a desert. And besides, if you crash, nobody's going to come for you. Hammond reluctantly. Fine. How many times am I going to say that this trip? If you two are ready, shall we start? Scene. Clarkson's tank driving through desert. Clarkson narrates. All was well in the Franken tank. The suspension was still shot and the engine noises was going to do my head in, but the speed was good and the air conditioner was keeping the heat at bay. It was cheap and the dodgy bloke I bought it from probably stole it, but it turned out amazing. Clarkson Vox's May. So, where are we going again? Some place called Sanctum Flats is our first waypoint. Then we're going to try and reach Ward's Butte before sundown. It's a massive butte. More of a mess, really. So you can't miss it. Who names a place Sanctuary in a desert? There's obviously sod all there. Some bloke from that damnadum ludum place, if I recall, said it was heaven compared to what he legged it from back home. It must have been really desperate. You know, I've just had a thought about Hammond. His cockpit has no air conditioning, so he's essentially made a greenhouse. Speaking of Hammond, do we still have that widget on board? <laughs> Maybe we should test it. May presses the button. Hammond's speeder dives. A faint scream can be heard. <laughs> May sniggering. <laughs> it appears so. Scene. Hammond's cockpit. Ventilation holes and canopy are open. A gust of wind blows sand in the, into the cockpit. Hammond sits impassively. Sing. May's driving palace. The guard should make more of their IVFs like this. Sure, it's a bit less efficient, but it would work wonders for rank morale. It can even be used to ward off your enemies. It won't work on bandits, chaos or xenos, but they're just our advisories. My enemies are those two. May, Vox to Clarkson. How is your cruddy suspension doing in all this rock? Clarkson to May. If I hadn't bought this seat cushion, I'd have broken every bone in my body by now. May, Vox to Clarkson. Well, heads up. The rocks get bigger ahead. Better get your plaster cast ready. Sing, Clarkson's tank shortly afterwards. Camera is shaking and subject to a deafening, clattering Clarkson. Inaudible. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sing Harmon's Cockpit. Sanctum Flats is up ahead, lads. May via Vox. Excellent. We can stop and have a break and inspect the damage. Clarkson via Vox. <laughs> <laughs> Trio pull up on Sanctum Salt Flats. Blimey, I'm gonna need stronger sunglasses here. Clarkson picks up a lump of halite. When we get home, I'm going to celebrate with a nice fish and chips. I'm going to crush this up and put it on it. No need to shout, Jeremy. Say it again. <laughs> I said no need to shout. Sorry, I've gone mostly deaf from that racket. Anyway, I was hoping we could use this wonderful flat land to have a drag race. Hammond, you're disqualified. <laughs> Pah. Well, we can't have a proper episode without a drag race, can we? Excellent. But we need some motivation. How about the loser eats that chunk of salt? <laughs> Wait a minute. What's that vehicle over there? The camera crew are all driving ridge runners. But that's definitely something else. I think that's a Tauros. It's a glorified buggy with no charm, no presence, no proper engine, no weapon. <laughs> this one at least. And no doors. And I pity the poor saw driving it. <laughs> Looks like you better not break down. Shall we? <laughs> He's only doing this because he thinks he'll win. I'll show him. Sing. Start line. Here we go. Clarkson shall be eating his own salt soon. Three, two, one. Hammond fires heavy stubbers on zero. Go, go, go! Power! <laughs> Crashing noises are heard from within May's cabin. A seat and much broken china fly out of the back. A tread salt flies off Clarkson beginning to pull away. He's getting away. Come on, come on. Yes. <laughs> Clarkson crosses the line a couple of seconds ahead of May. Oh, cock. Ha <laughs> the best tank reigns supreme. Hammond Vox de May. James, you seem to have lost most of your plates and furniture and partially disintegrated. Wonderful. Cut. Just eat it. This is going to be horrible, isn't it? May crunches the salt lump. He creases into a look of disgust. Ah, that's vile. Ew. Hammond and Clarkson smirk. May finishes lump. You got any water? Cut. Hey guys, do you like models in your tabletop role playing games? Cause we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Cause we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties. We got lizard bitties. We got orc bitties. Oni bitties. Cat bussies. We've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below. It helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video. Let's get on the story. Lads, there's a waddy at the end of the flat. Looks like it leads towards the butte. How about we drive in that? Since I'll get hearing damage from five more minutes on those stones. I was getting a little tired of that myself. Lead the way, Hammond. Waddy meanders through the desert. Walls begin to get higher. I say, it looks more like a canyon than a dry river now. Well, we can't leave now, unless you want to turn around and go the bumpy route. I'm fine here, thank you. Waddy gets deeper and narrower. I, I say we're not going to have room to turn our vehicles around soon. Well, we're here now. Not only have you two trapped yourselves in a canyon, you have driven straight into Ward's Butte the back way. You can keep going on your own, Jeremy. I'm going to find a way out. Whatever. You have no sense of adventure. Clarkson and May eventually climb out via a side canyon some way back. Late evening. Sing. Campsite. You sure about camping here? There's a lot of boulders around. Clarkson kicks the face of Ward's butte. Look. See? Rock solid. It'll stay here forever. Since all my plates were lost during your stupid drag race earlier, dinner will have to be on box lids. Fortunately, there's still enough chairs. Sing. May's Lounge. All three are drinking beer with rear end open. Dusk. You know, this is actually quite nice. Enjoy it while you can, gentlemen. We've got June Fields tomorrow. You know, I'm amazed nothing has broken down yet. Don't say that. Sing. Hammond's Cockpit. Night. My bed's full of sand! Fade to black. Sing. Campsite. Sunrise. Not hot yet. May walks out to see Hammond and Clarkson up. Hammond is miserably nursing some recaf. Morning, lads. Had a good night, did you? I did. Did you get out on the wrong side of the bed? If he did, he'd get quite a shock from gravity. Get lost, both of you. Cut. Sing. May's IFE. 
Today we're going to be heading through Junefield E4 of Erg DD. It doesn't even have a name. Just hundreds of miles of massive dunes and bugger all they appreciate if you don't like sand. They have to occasionally send people off to track the dunes since they keep moving. Sand gets eroded off the stoss slope by cut. Greenfall and green flow form distinct alternating colour layers within dune deposits, which you can see cut. <laughs> Vehicle drives up and down small dunes. Clarkson and May whoop while Hammond skips across. Scene. Base of huge dune. That is a big dune. Don't worry, it looks bigger and steeper than it is from down here. Hammond via Vox. I don't know, it looks pretty big from up here too. I'm as high as you can go and I'm only about a fifth of the way up. You go first, Jeremy. Watch and learn. <laughs> Sing. Clarkson's tank. Here we go. Come on, you brilliant machine. Give, Give me, me power! power! Clarkson starts up the slope. Fortunately, the tracks here won't slip on grease, much less lose sand. Same. Base of gin. He's smoking. No wonder his engine is overheating like this in this weather doing that. Hammond Vivox. How long do we give him to notice? I say about 20 seconds. Same. Clarkson's tank. What's that burning smell? Oh, beep! <laughs> Please not here! Please not here! Engine stops. No! Sing. Base of gin. He stopped and he's barely even got halfway up. Good job, Jeremy. Several minutes pass. Sing. Clarkson's tank. Clarkson checks watch. Right. It should be cool enough now. Let's give it a try. Engine starts. Yes! Now let's finish this. Tank crests the gin and careens and slumps down the other side. Ah! Urine is coming out! Tank reaches the bottom. Clarkson exhales and relaxes. Come on, James. It's a lovely trip. Sing. May's IFE. Unlike Jeremy, I will be taking this slowly and carefully. Fortunately, I don't have anything loose in the back left to fall out or smash after that silly drag race of Jeremy's. James drives up the gin over the next couple of minutes without a vent to the crest. Ooh, uh -huh. <laughs> that's a lot of sky. Careful now, careful. May slides to a stop next to Clarkson. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you drive over a gin properly. James, that was phenomenally boring. Well, unlike you, I've done this properly and I don't have a death wish. You square. We've got hundreds of miles to cover today. You can't take everything slow. Hammond via Vox. Looks like the rest of the gins are much smaller. Should be easier. You don't even have to deal with them, you smug git. Montage of Clarkson and May driving up and down June after June while Hammond skims overhead. Trio have departed the June field. Sand is largely flat. There's something in the distance. L looks like a shipwreck of the space kind. A big one. Anyone want to have a look? You two can. I'm staying here in my air-conditioned palace. Suit yourself. It looks interesting. Can't tell exactly what it is. May and Hammond walk around the ship. Wonder what this used to be. Whatever it is, it's pretty beaten up and rusted. It looks old. Before you ask, no, I'm not going in there. Hammond and May round the corner. Two Astartes and Cymatic Hammer's livery are standing next to their own speeder. They look to the duo. Uh, hi. What are you doing here? We're just passing by. The ship seemed like an interesting sight. What are you doing all the way out here, if I may ask? 500 years ago, several of our battle brothers gave their lives to destroy this warband ship. The One Million Thrones. In orbit, one was never found. We are here to search for the remains. It's not safe for you here. You should go. Then we shall be on our way, sirs. Cut. Well, that was an interesting encounter. I'm a tad disappointed we didn't get to explore a bit more. But 500 years? They really don't give up, do they? I'm more relieved they didn't try and nick the land speeder back. Find anything interesting, gentlemen? Nope. Nothing at all. Same. Campsite in a grove of shrubbery trees. Late evening. May walks in brandishing some plant. Here, try some. What is this? Space celery? Very funny. It's nice. And it grows everywhere. You're not lying. It is nice. I bet it'll taste even better roasted on the fire. Jeremy, it's a succulent plant. Nonsense. Everything tastes better roasted. Several minutes later. My culinary masterpiece is done. Jeremy takes a bite and tosses it. 
Not tasty, was it? It was so tasty I didn't want to take another bite. So that I wouldn't have to go the rest of my life without nothing ever approaching it. We'll go with that. I'm going to bed. Enjoy your hovels. Excuse me. At least it's not pretentious. I'm sure it would be quite comfortable. So long as I shake the sand out this time. First thing I'm going to do when we arrive tomorrow is go to the pub. Jeremy, they don't have pints in our night. The ship's bar then. Good night. Sing. Clarkson's tank next morning. We don't have Richard with us today. He caught wind that there's some kind of medio limp severe dust storm warning out today and refused to stick around to be caught in it like a chicken. He simply took off. How rude of him. Still, if we're quick, we might be able to make it to Kalish in time. Scene. May's IFV. Now, I have come a bit more prepared. He thinks I'm simply reading a map and can't use technology. But what I have here is a nav slate. It tells me exactly where I am, even in the worst of storms. A loud crack and clatter is heard. IFE tilts slightly and heels around to the left. Cock! What was that? Clocks and via Vox. James, your treads come off. Well, that isn't good. Cut to May and Clarkson standing outside. James, I told you this would happen. No, you didn't. Because the opposite of what you said always happens. Anyway, it seems like the drive wheels are intact. So someone just has to fix the tread and put it back on. Anyone got the jack? While protocol would just normally dictate I leave you behind to stew in your own misery. In this case, I don't want to be driving through a desert without someone I can kill and eat if we get lost. Remember, the Tauros is just over there. A couple of hours pass, the broken link is replaced and is being threaded back on. A huge sandstorm is visible on the horizon. Oh my, it's huge! No wonder Hammond didn't want to fly in that. May, detect priest. Could we speed it up a bit, lads? I'd rather not be stuck here. Repairs are finished as sky begins to darken. Camera crew scrambles to their own vehicles. Don't go too far at all. If you do, you will get lost and die. How cheery. I can't believe I'm taking orders from you, of all people. Jeremy, I'm serious. Sky darkens to black as night. Visibility is under 100 metres. I can't see a thing in this. Are you sure you know where we're going? Surer than you are, that's for certain. Now, as you'd expect, I've done this properly and bought a nav slate. Oh, Clarkson to himself. I did replace the dust filter, didn't I? Several hours later, the sky has largely cleared. Look, look, there's a town. No, look closer, that's only a mirage. Clarkson is visibly disappointed. I'm just about done with this desert. I'm hot, I'm bored, I'm sandy, I stink. And there's not even a pub at our destination. Who told you that? They'll at least have a few bars. Hammond's probably sitting in one now, smirking. May and Clarkson approach town. There's his land speeder. I see no Hammond inside it. Clarkson voxes Hammond. Hammond, we're next to your speeder. Where are you? Hammond via Vox. Look to your left. Hammond is sitting on the other side of the street at a table under a parasol with a fan, glass of Asimek and a newspaper. Sorry, there isn't any left, and the ship wants us back soon to avoid any delays. Shall we get moving again? Both glare at Hammond. (laughs) Hammond, you are unbelievable! I wouldn't be so smug, Richard. You left your windows open. Hammond looks to his cockpit. Anyone got a vacuum? Sing. Clarkson's tank en route to spaceport. I'm impressed by how this machine has held up. I must admit, I was madly concerned about it ripping itself apart or getting a shot for possessing Xenos tech heresy. And yes, it did strand me halfway up a sand dune, but it's been a solid machine. Sing, May's IFV. The Chimera has held up to everything we've thrown at it. That one incident with the track was only because it was rusted all the way through. Other than that, it deserved every letter of its reputation. Most importantly, it can even make me a T on the move. Sing. Hammond's cockpit. I have nothing bad to say about the speeder. Definitely not. I still love it as much as I started. Maybe even more so. This whole trip has been great for me. With a few years, I might even be able to control it well. Or I might leave it to the Space Marines. I think I'll do that next time. Sing. Lithonia VIP Lounge. Terra Orbit. It doesn't get old, does it? Looking at it. It's a good thing we're with the IBC. Imagine waiting in a queue for a century with you two. A voidsman enters. Hello? Voidsman hands May a note. May, reading. You have arrived at Holy Terra. 
Shortly, you will be sent to the surface near Hive Manchestius and receive your challenge there. Don't forget your breathing masks. Always the same. Can't they just tell us? Of course not. That would be bad for suspense. Sing. Small open space near Hive Manchestius. Respiration muffles speech. Beneath the guilt, indeed. What could they possibly want us to do on Terra, of all places? Adept passes Clarkson a challenge card. Clarkson reading. Welcome to Terra. Now the custodies are deployed beyond the palace. The man who usually brings a squad over in Hive Poltonia, next door, their lunch has called in sick. You will each take one case of marmalade sandwiches and deliver it to the destination. Are you serious? That is utterly ridiculous. I know. The Emperor is guarded by Paddington Bear. <laughs> Besides, how hard can it be? You know, it was actually Clarkson's mum who wrote, wrote Paddington. Paddington Bear. So yeah. there you go, guys. A wee bit of trivia for you. Don't say that either. Clarkson narrates. James opted to try his luck in the busy and unfortunately named Exclusivia E666, braving the thick traffic to skirt the hives. Richard feeling uncharacteristically brave, decided to try and skim over the roofs between the ground and the skyways. I, on the other hand, decided to take the most direct route. Straight three hive Manchestius. Sing, Clarkson's tank. Vehicle is hurtling through arteries and tunnels. If my impeccable calculations are correct, these tunnels should take me right through and straight out the other side. What's better? The only traffic in there is the odd servitor, loader, arbitress, and lost hiver. Crate slides around in the back. The race on Sly has made me into a master hive driver. Vehicle scrapes parks, parks on walls. <laughs> <laughs> Sing. Maze IFV. The Chimera is too big for the Ordania network, so they sent me on the Exclusivia network instead. How awfully nice of them. Though all the Arbites up here are glaring at me. Then again, our bites are all sour pusses anyway. Our bites rhino flashes its lights at me. Uh oh, look like the rosers aren't happy. I'm hoping to avoid being shot at today, so let's see what these folks want. Hello, officer. Sing, Clarkson's tank. Clarkson narrates. I, meanwhile, was having my own problems in the middle of the hive. Where are these tunnels going? They're not going the way I want them to anymore at all. Tunnel kinks around again. I'm not quite sure where I am in here anymore. The only people around are servitors, and they aren't very talkative. Perhaps it's this way? Sing, Hammond's cockpit. Hammond is weaving through buildings. Right, I should be getting close now. There it is. There's the flag. Hammond descends at speed towards the destination marker. Oh, it's quite fast. That's quite a lot of speed. Where are the brakes? Stop, stop! Speeder does not stop and crashes at moderate speed through the wall of a temple. Ouch! Beep! <laughs> this has not gone well. Airbag deploys. Sing. Hive. Boltonia. Courthouse dungeon. Can I at least have a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> Door slams. Sing. Clarkson's tank. Light! I see light! I'm finally getting out of here! Vehicle emerges within sight of starting yard. You've got to be kidding me! Clarkson via Vox. Hammond. May. You there? Hello? Fade to black. Fade into studio to applause. That trip didn't exactly end well, did it, lads? Last I heard, the custodians are still waiting for their lunch. I don't think you realise just how absurd that last task was. They don't even eat sandwiches. They also don't crash their vehicles, Hammond. Look who speaks, you got nicked. They let me out of lockup after a few hours when they figured out my vehicle that wasn't registered to the Imperial authorities was actually supposed to be there. They broke the tea maker too, the bastards. Audience member shouts. What was that? Where are the vehicles? Ah, yes. We've pried the bent wreck of Hammond's speeder out of the hole in the wall. But on the way back here to Dunsfold Station, we encountered a company of blood ravens. Sadly, we were unable to bolt the vehicle down in time. They came all this way and went through so much, only to be stolen by bloody magpies. Yes, shame that. Anyway, moving on. The scores. First up here is the cost. You get one point for each £10 under budget you were. I was 3000 over budget, so I get minus 300 points. James, you get 400 points. And Richard, you get 100 points. 
the first line and you're already in the negative. Next up, we got 20 points for each orc you killed with your vehicles, which means you get 80 points, I get 140 points, and Meg gets a whopping 460 points. See, I told you mine was the best choice. Next, the hive races. I came last, so I got zero for that. James, for coming second, you got 200 points, and Richard, for coming first, you got 400 points. Nobody got awarded any points for their desert trip because we couldn't figure out how to, and none of us managed to deliver anything, so none of us got any points for that either. If my math is correct, that makes me the winner. Not so fast, Hammond. At my suggestion, the producers introduce a special category. Damage penalty, where you get minus one point for every ten pound of damage you caused. James didn't cause any damage, so he gets zero for that. I apparently caused four thousand pounds worth of damage on Sly, which gives me minus four hundred points. Now, Richard, do you have any idea how much damage your little prying on terror cost? No. You caused a whopping two hundred and twenty thousand pounds worth of damage to the temple, which gives you, oh dear, minus twenty two thousand points. That's complete bollocks. You just made that up so you wouldn't have to lose to me. Excuses, excuses, Hammond. That puts me on 1,060 points. Jeremy on minus 560 points. And Captain Crash here on minus 21,420. Therefore, I win. May does a victory jig and makes the loser sign. <laughs> why, did, why, why did he always do that? He does like a boomer tear for I know. It is, it's boomer tear for awesome. What this means is that a boring, rusty, generic vehicle with an integrated tea maker and lounge in the back has beaten the best mech boys and anti gravity technology has to offer. The trip even made Hammond hate his fancy speedy thing. Hammond starts to protest but is repeatedly shushed. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you all very much for watching. Good, Good night. night. Zimite, roll credits. Now, I do wish they could have their star in the least place car. So what yeah. would their least place car be? I'm going to assume it's some form of Lino variant. Uh-huh. What would, what would you guys say? And what type of guests would you have on? Yeah. That would be a very good one to see. Oh, yeah. I'd love this. Now, before we say anything... There is more to this thread, but it's not about the story, but it's just people talking about 40 Hey Top Gear. If that's something you guys are interested in, let us know, and we might just do like you know, the short wee tidbits yeah. that people have like put together. I just think it's a really funny thought experiment, and yeah. I actually, I, look, I really enjoy Top Gear. I really enjoy so doing it. So I, I, I think this was a particularly fun story for me. And I don't know about you, but anytime I'm reading out who it's from, I'm, I'm in my head. I can fully picture it. It's fully their voice. It's yeah. not coming out as their voice, but I'm I'm seeing it as their voice yeah. fully. But uh, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I thought it was really good. It's probably one of my favorite I've done in a while. Yeah. Um. So again, if you guys want, we might be able to do like a wee bit more, but that's up to you. Um. As always, if you enjoyed this, like you know, check the links. Check the links. The models, Definitely subscribe. It does help us out yeah. a lot. Um, Hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Do 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 do